opportunity. What's on your mind, Tommy? Okay, let's talk about the tree care industry and climbers. And I, uh, wait a minute now, man. It's not that difficult, tree work. Like a lot of climbers seem to be full of hubris. Like they have these big egos. Have you noticed that? I have. Some of the better ones, actually. And even some of the have egos. And I really don't get it. Now, I'm not some great climber, you know, but I would say I'm definitely above middle of the pack above that but like like I would I don't know it just seems weird it's just I mean some people I guess are humble or just don't feel they're worthy of praise or whatever but it's like the people just talk that shit, like really annoying and they're not that great they're not they're not really that great you know I mean I don't know if you can agree with me and <clears throat> you know and I'm not going to talk about Anybody in particular. Yeah. But, you know. All right, so let's get into it. Yes. One of my thoughts about the situation is that when a tree climber goes up there and does his job, one of the things that distinguishes his job from most other jobs is that there's always the threat of death. Like, anytime you're, you're up there, you can make one mistake, you, you know, cut yourself, bleed out, fall, land on your head, break your neck. Lots of ways to die up there. Okay? Okay. So... So right there, there's this, there's this like you're flirting with, with like death, and that alone I think tends to get people into this flight or flight state of consciousness, where, uh, like ego becomes like part of self preservation. Like for example, you'll see some climbers they'll just freak out at the at the littlest thing the ground man makes one little mistake ties the wrong rope on or whatever and the guy and the guy's up there screaming at him why is he screaming i mean he might be an otherwise pretty peaceful guy but on some level my take on that is that when the ground man screws up and it take it throws the concentration of the climber off you know especially on on you know critically difficult and dangerous trees all of a sudden now that guy's incompetence is putting me the climber my life at risk because i just threw my game it's a game of chess up there i'm thinking three four five moves ahead of time okay now i gotta stop everything and say you know tie the other rope on what other rope the other rope and then, and then next thing you know it's like all of a sudden maybe there's irritation and upset and now now i get back there and like i'm i was in the middle of thinking how i was going to make this cut and I, and I and and it threw me off, and then I'm not in the right kind of Zen like mind state to just go and be in flow here because I've been thrown off. So I, you know, I mean, that's I'm not saying that's all on the ground man's perspective, but I can understand. I mean, it's clearly that's the climber. He lost his cool. He's got to be responsible for his own state of mind. But I can clearly also understand how, in some situations, you know, a climber can kind of kind of get that big head because. It's his life up there at risk. Okay, and I can appreciate that, but if that were the case, my perception of that is, if you're flirting with death all the time, you should have a better appreciation of your own life and those around you, which would make you a more, I don't want to say loving person, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like you're laughing in the face of death then with that big ego. Oh, nothing's going to happen to me. I can do it all. There's nothing I can't do. And it's like, yo, you got to chill with that. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? I like, do understand. Yeah, sure. And it's like, I mean, we we all, whether you work in Wawa or pump gas, it's like, you know, we're all go through life with a gun to your head. 